Welcome to this uh, first lesson on the producer theory. Along with uh, this uh, lesson and this video, you uh, have access to some references. Some documents are available with the training. Uh, the first one is a summary of the producer theory along with exercises and uh, the second is a reference on functional forms uh, used in CGE model. This document will also be used uh, in the lesson on the consumer theory. I suggest that uh, throughout the training, but also as future reference, you have in hand a reference book on intermediate microeconomics. I suggest the book from Varian, but you can use whatever book you have on intermediate macro, uh, microeconomics. Uh, also, I suggest that you have in hand throughout the modeling process a reference book on mathematical aspects. I suggest the uh, uh, a book here from Chang, but if you'd rather use another book, uh, you may do so. Uh, finally, you will probably find most of the information that will be discussed over the next slides uh, on the internet. Uh, feel free to use uh, this information, but make sure that you verify the sources uh, uh, to make sure that uh, the information you get is the right one. The producer theory is very important in uh, CG modeling. Why? Well, simply because uh, the, the the productive activity is the core of the economic activity. Uh, the producer theory describes how uh, commodities are produced. It describes also the use of the factors of production, which is the main source uh, of income for, uh, for agent. Uh, and it also describes uh, the quantity produced of each commodity, that is a description of the supply side. The, pr the presentation today will be in two parts. The first, in the first part, we will study the production function, and in the second, we will discuss the production possibility frontier. The firm's production function for a given commodity shows uh, the maximum quantity uh, that can be produced of a commodity uh, using uh, an alternative combination of different inputs. So here the production function is represented by Q and in this production function uh, F1, F2 uh, uh, through Fn represent the quantity used of each input. The marginal product of an input, uh, which is uh, expressed here using QFI, is the additional output that uh, the producer can, uh, can produce by employing or using one additional unit of that specific input while all other input are maintained constant. It is uh, described by the derivative of the production function with respect to that specific input. The isoquant is a graphical representation of the production function. It shows all the uh, combinations possible of input that can be used to produce a given quantity of output. Let's put on the x-axis the quantity used of factor i and on the y-axis uh, the quantity used of uh, input j. Now, along the isoquant that is shown on the screen right now, uh, the quantity produced of the commodity is Q0. The isoquant here does show that the different quantities of, of input i and j that can be used to produce uh, the quantity Q0. Now, the further we get from the origin, 
the bigger is uh, the quantity produced so Q1 is greater than Q0 and Q2 is greater than Q1 Q and uh, Q0. The marginal rate of uh, technical substitution shows the rate at which an input can be substituted for another while holding output constant along an isoquant. The marginal rate of technical substitution is equal to the absolute value of the slope of the isoquant and mathematically it corresponds to the ratio of uh, the marginal productivity of each factor. As shown uh, by the isoquant, there is a multiple there are multiple possible combination of inputs that can be used to produce a given quantity of output. Now the optimal combination depends of course on the prices of each of these inputs. The producer seeks at minimizing its uh, costs subject to uh, the available technology here uh, described by its uh, production function. So mathematically it seeks at minimizing the cost uh, here described by C which is simply the sum of the product of the quantity used of each uh, input F times its uni unitary cost here uh, represented by variable WI subject to uh, the, pro the production function described here by uh, variable Q. This problem can be expressed uh, using a Lagrangien and this is what appears on the screen right now. To find the optimal combination of input that the producer su should use, uh, we must um, derive the first on order conditions from our Lagrangien. And this is done by uh, derivating uh, our function with respect to each input f and with respect to uh, the lambda parameter. As we are looking for a minimum, each derivative is set equal to zero. So the derivative with respect to each input is given by the following expression which describes the relation between uh, the unitary cost of the factor and its marginal product. By definition, the derivative with respect to the parameter lambda simply gives the production function. From the first equation, one can find uh, the following relative demand for input and this expression states that the optimal combination of input is achieved when the relative price of the input uh, is equal to the marginal rate of uh, technical substitution. Now let's go back to our graph uh, to show what these uh, mathematical findings correspond to on our graph. So what we say is that the relative prices should be equal to the slope of the isoquant since the price, uh, the relative prices at the optimum should be equal to the um, marginal rate of technical substitution which is uh, also equal to the slope of the uh, isoquant. At this point of tangen tangency, we find the optimal quantity uh, that the producer should use in order to produce uh, Q0 uh, if their relative prices is given by uh, Wi and Wj. So the, the optimal quantity of, f of each input is shown here as being Fi star and F J star. 
Now, what is of interest to uh, the CG modeler is the easiness with which a producer can adapt its um, production process to a change in relative prices, which is called the elasticity of substitution. To the initial relative prices corresponds a relative demand for input, which is shown on the screen right now. Suppose that the unitary cost of input J increases and that the cost of input I remains unchanged. Graphically, the slope decreases as the ratio of WI over WJ decreases and this brings us to a new optimal point on our isoquant which translates into a new demand for each input. The producer chooses to use more of the input I and less of the input J since the former is now relatively cheaper than the latter. Mathematically, the elasticity of substitution measures the relative variation of the quantity used of inputs for a variation in the, the marginal rate of technical substitution, which at the optimum is equal to the price ratio. Up until now, we have seen what is the optimal combination of inputs, or in other words, we have seen how the firm should produce. But the producer must also determine how much output he should produce. Obviously, the quantity of output will depend on the price at which the producer can sell his production on the market. In other words, uh, the producer seeks at maximizing his profits uh, that is the difference between his revenues and his costs. Hence, at the optimum, the marginal revenue is equal to the marginal cost, which determines the optimal quantity the firm should produce. When a firm operates in a competitive environment, this, is, uh, this means that he is a price taker and the marginal revenue is simply equal to the uh, output market price. Thus, the demand for each input, given its cost, and given the price of the output and the available technology, is determined by profit maximization. The firm's economic profits can be expressed as um, a function of the input it employs. The profit maximizing firm's decision problem is thus to choose the appropriate levels of each input, hence the first order conditions uh, are given by the derivative of the profit function relative to each input. This is what, happy, what appears on the screen right now. So this expression says that a profit maximizing uh, firm should hire any input up to the point at which the input's marginal contribution to revenue is equal to the marginal costs of hiring this input. What we should keep in mind from uh, the previous discussion is that the optimal uh, combination and the adjustment capacity of a producer basically depend on the production technology and therefore the functional form the modeler will choose in his, uh, in his uh, model will determine the production, the producer's behavior. So in the few uh, next slides, we will have a look at the most frequently used function in CG models. And these are uh, the CES function. CES stands for constant elasticity of substitution. And we will have a look at two specific cases of the CES uh, function, which are uh, the Leontief function and the uh, Cobb douglas function. The CES function suppose that uh, there is substitution possibilities between input. So, for example, let's uh, say that to sew a dress, a seamstress can either use a needle and work uh, for 15 hours 
or she can use a sewing machine and work two hours. In other words, in this uh, production function, substitution between labor and capital is possible. Mathematically, a CES type production technology is written as follows. In this uh, mathematical representation, a delta and rho are uh, parameters, Q uh, is the volume of production, and Fi the amount use, uh, used of each input. From profit maximization under constraint, just as we have seen uh, previously, we can derive the following demand function. In this equation, the parameter sigma is a rewrite of the parameter rho, uh, and P is the price of the product, W is the unitary cost of each input. The same goes for the demand for all inputs, so we can determine the relative demand function as shown on the screen right now. Now, since the elasticity of substitution corresponds to the relative variation of Fi to Fj for a given change in relative prices, then we can say that the elasticity of substitution in this case is equal to sigma. Now, doing the math is one thing, uh, the modeler must keep in mind what is the interpretation of using a CES function. Now, we see that the reaction of the producer will depend on the value of the elasticity. The higher the elasticity is, well, the easier it will be for a producer to switch from an input to the other. In other words, a small change in relative prices will cause a large change in relative demand. On the opposite, uh, the lower the elasticity is, the harder it is for a producer to switch from one input to the other. In other words, a big change in relative prices will only cause a small change in relative demand. There are two specific cases of uh, the CES function that are widely used in CGE model. The first case is when the elasticity tends towards zero, or uh, which represents the case of perfect complementarity, which is uh, also called the Leontief function, and the other case where the elasticity of substitution tends towards one in which case we have a Cobb Douglas type of function. Now let's go back to uh, our seamstress and see uh, how a Leontief function can be represented. So let's say that to make uh, the same dress, our seamstress needs three meters of fabric. She needs five buttons and she needs a ribbon with which she will make uh, the belt. Now there is no substitution between uh, any of these input and they should all be used in the same proportion regardless of the price of the fabric, the buttons or the ribbon. The Leontief function mathematically uh, is expressed as uh, follow and in this uh, function here gamma is a uh, parameter F is uh, the quantity used of each input and Q is the quantity produced using these input. Now if we derive the demand function we can see that uh, the demand for each factor is independent of factor prices. There are no prices uh, appearing in this function and the quantity used of uh, each input is simply uh, proportional to uh, the uh, quantity of output produced. In uh, such production function, relative demand is thus fixed and does not depend on the relative prices of the input. In other words, the, the elasticity of substitution between input is equal to zero. 
Again, what is important here for the modeler is the interpretation of using uh, such a production function. Uh, when we say that the inputs relative prices have no impact, it means that the composition will be fixed. Any change in the volume of production will transmit proportionally to the amount used of each input. This uh, property is important in the understanding the transmission mechanism of a shock. If the modeler uses a Leon TF type of function, it is therefore expected that adjustments uh, of all the production function elements be proportional regardless of changes in relative prices. As we mentioned uh, before, the Cobb Douglas production function is a special case of the CES when the elasticity tends toward 1. It is written as uh, follow, and in this function, A and alpha are parameters. Again, profit maximization is used to derive the following demand function, and in this function, P is the price of the uh, output Q, where and uh, WI is the unitary cost of factor I. From uh, the, this demand function, we can derive the following relative demand function. Now, here again, since the elasticity of substitution is uh, the relative change in the demand ratio for a change in the relative prices, the elasticity of substitution is equal to 1. Here too, it is good to keep in mind the implications of using a Cobb douglas type of function. The demand function means that the amount spent on the purchase of each input is a constant proportion of total costs. Indeed, we can rewrite the demand function seen previously as follows. In other words, the expenditures, the expenditure in input i always corresponds to a proportion alpha of total sales. Thus, an increase in product sales price will result in a proportional increase in demand factor. In, uh, it is the same for a change in the production vo volume. If the quantity produced increases by 1% and that all prices remain unchanged, well, the demand for each factor will also increase by 1%. Up until now, we have described how inputs can be, can be combined to produce one commodity. Now, suppose that the same producer can produce several products. For example, uh, the tailor can produce dresses, but can also produce shirts, pants, etc. The production possibility frontier gives all possible combination of goods that can be produced for a given quantity of inputs. Let the x axis represent uh, the quantity produced of good x i and the y axis represent uh, the quantity produced of commodity x j. The production possibility frontier describes all the feasible combination of Xi and Xj that can be produced using the available inputs. For example, the amount of shirts and dresses that can be produced for a given amount of fabrics, buttons, seamstress and sewing machine. The greater the amount of available input is, well, the greater the production will be and the further the frontier will be from the origin. The marginal rate uh, of transformation is the reduction of production in commodity J required to increase the production of commodity I by one input. The MRT at a given point uh, on the frontier is equal to the slope of the tangent line in absolute term. Mathematically, 
the uh, marginal rate of transformation is given by the ratio of marginal physical productivity of each commodity. Therefore, there are multiple, uh, multiple possibilities for the producer. Symmetrically to the production function, the producer will seek to maximize its, maximize its revenue subject to the transformation function. Mathematically speaking, the revenue function corresponds to the sales revenue from each output, that is the quantity sold times its, pri its unit price, subject to the transformation function. The maximization uh, problem can be rewritten as the following Lagrangian. The first order conditions are given by the Lagrangian's derivative with uh, respect to each product and with respect to the parameter lambda, which is also called the Lagrange parameter. Since our objective is to find a maximum, each derivative must be set equal to zero. Now, the derivative with respect to each output i gives us the following equation which describes the relationship between uh, the price received per unit and the physical marginal productivity. The derivative with respect to parameter lambda simply gives us uh, the transformation function. Now, from the first equation, we can derive the following uh, relative supply function. That is to say that, at optimum, the marginal rate of technical transformation is equal to uh, the relative price of the products. Now, back on our graph, uh, on our production poss possibility frontier, the price ratio must be uh, equal to the slope of the uh, production possibility frontier to determine the optimal production of each commodity. At this specific point, the optimal production of output i and j are x i star and x j star. Again, what is of interest to the CG modeler is the ease with which the producer can adjust his production to changes in relative prices, that is to say, the elasticity of transformation. To the previous price ratio correspond a relative supply of output as shown on the screen. Suppose now that the price of good XI increases and that the, uh, the price for uh, commodity XJ remains unchanged. Graphically, the slope increases as the ratio PI over PJ uh, uh, increases. This brings us to a new optimal point on the possibility frontier and a new supply for each product. The firm will choose to produce more of product I and less of product J since the, la the latter is now relatively less profitable. Mathematically, the elasticity of transformation measures the relative variation of the ratio of the quantities supplied for a given change in relative prices. The transformation function most frequently used by CG modelers is the CET function, uh, where CET stands for constant elasticity of transformation or production function with constant elasticity of transformation. This function is written as follow and in this function B, uh, beta and uh, rho represents parameter, X represents the quantity produced of each output and Q the amount of total production. Now, a maximization of uh, revenue subject to the CET function allows the derivation of the following supply function. In this function, the parameter tau is a rewrite of parameter rho used in the uh, transformation function. 
Now, from this equation, we can derive the following relative supply function. Since the elasticity of transformation corresponds to the relative change in the ratio of the quantities for a given change in the relative prices, the, rel the elasticity is thus equal to tau. Again, the modeler must keep in mind the implication of using a CET um, transformation function. More particularly, he must keep in mind that the higher the elasticity of transformation is, well, the easier it is for the producer to adapt his production following a change in uh, the prices he can obtain on the market. Hence, a small change in relative prices will cause a large change in relative supply. Conversely, if the elasticity uh, of transformation is very small, then uh, it is very hard for the pro producer to adapt to, uh, the, to changes in uh, the price he can get for his production. In other words, a large change in relative prices will uh, cause a small change in relative supply because the producer cannot adapt easily. Now, symmetrically to the CES function, the Leontief is also a special case of the CET function where the elasticity of transformation tends towards zero. One can indeed imagine that in some cases the production, um, the production process leads to the production of different output in fixed proportions. For example, a, a barrel of crude oil allows the production of specific amount of gasoline and heating oil. The producer cannot adjust uh, his production uh, following a change in prices. Similarly, from an orange, one can produce quantities of juice and pulp in fixed proportion. Now, in short, what uh, have we seen up until now? Well, the production function is used to derive the demand for inputs. We saw that the degree of substitution between input is decisive in the input demand behavior and that uh, only the relative prices of factor matter. In parallel, the transformation function is used to derive the relative supply of each output and the degree of transformation is critical in the supply behavior of the producer. Here too, only relative prices matter. What we have seen during this lesson is a summary of what is presented in the uh, documents attached to this lesson. I, inv I invite the participants to read uh, the documents carefully and to do the suggested exercise. These will be help very helpful uh, for the development of the skills required to be a good CGE modeler.